Archie Morrissey and Pete Finnerty. Thank you very much, Michael. Welcome back to the second half. As you mentioned, uh, Barry McFall is coming on for Tomás McCann. And uh, Barry McFall is going to be playing at midfield instead of uh, McCann. McCann uh, doing well to be in Cork Park. He plays Division 4 hurling in Antrim. And here he is playing against Cork and marking somebody like John Gardner. But anyway, however, uh, his journey has ended here and it's uh, Barry McFall that's going to be on for the second half. Well, the plan was always to get to half time. The goal by Niall McCarthy is crucial because it's changed the whole uh, headlines from a, a Cork perspective and indeed from an Antrim perspective as well. So they're now chasing a team that's eight points to the good and not really under any great pressure. Tom Kenny has scored twice so far in this quarter final. Getting it in towards Michael Cusson. Back out far as Frankie Murphy. Good vision by Ben O'Connor. Tom Kenny going for point number three is dropping in towards Isakio Hapain. And nobody can get there. The referee has blown his whistle, given a free out because O'Halpine was inside the small rectangle. By the way, out of that 116 for Cork, 112 coming from play as we look at that missed opportunity because there were two, in fact, inside the small rectangle. And the free going to be taken by Chris O'Connell. Anyway, as I was saying, 112 out of 116 for play for Cork. Uh, for Antrim, it's two from uh, six from play, four from freeze, and 165, in case you're just joining us for the second half. Ball inside, far as Ray Ryan. Hoovering up, trying to make a bit of an angle for himself. Far as Liam Watson, challenged by Niall McCarthy. Oh, that's a great point. Oh, I have to say. It's a wonderful score. He did it earlier at the other end of the field from here in front of the Hogan stand, and he's done it again. Just what Antrim required. Well, they were down against other teams in the championship campaign, more recently against Dublin, and they fought back. And once you have that self-belief and a spirit, well, anything is possible. Slight difference, though, is that you're playing boys who have... So many All-Ireland medals already on the mantelpiece at home. Ronan Curran to Michael Cusson. Yet to score, it's dropping in and it's dropping well wide. Yeah, it's Marty, but sorry, it's, it's important that Antrim do contain what Cork are going to fire at them now because Cork will try and kill off the game at this stage. But if Antrim could get a few points into it, and you said last week they were down five or six points against Dublin that they kept their composure and won, won by a point. Going back is Ray Ryan, under pressure from Liam Watson. Owen Cadigan takes control. A little bit of confusion, nipping in is Neil McManus. Gets by the challenge, still McManus. Tries to lay it off, possibly wasn't the right option. Still Antrim have it, there's a chance here and stopped by Owen Cadigan. But they really need to not alone create these opportunities, but they need to take every single one of them. Sideline ball for Cork. This was the opportunity for Carl McKeegan. And it was Owen Cadigan that came across and ended any opportunity for Antrim. Well blocked by Simon McCrory. Willing to take on Tom Kenny and indeed John Garner. That's not a bad ball. Oh, good hands out of Ray Ryan. He's playing well at left half back. Again, it's Michael Cusson. Six foot seven in his bare feet. When he has a hurley in his hand, it goes right up into the clouds altogether. <laughs> I wouldn't like to be marking him, considering I'm five foot four, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's a giant of a man. And it's a, <laughs> he's, he's incredibly mobile as well for a man of obvious size. Carl Nocton. I wonder, did he pick that off the ground? Dropping this in towards his sake, and that is wide. Just watch this again. Did he pick this off the ground? Ooh. Mm, close. Very close. Yeah. But again, that ball now should have been struck maybe 20 yards shorter in in front, either in front of Asahi or just landing on the 21 rather than going for the score from that distance. Puck out by O'Connell is a good one because he is finding his man with those puck outs. 
This time it was center half forward Neil McManus. Little push there from uh, Ray Ryan. Dinny Cahill from Kilroan McDonough won an All Ireland club medal in, back in 1985 with his club. And of course, uh, played several Munster championships from 1980 to 84 with his native Tipperary. Neil McManus has shown he's quite a good free taker. He continues to impress in Croke Park with his sixth point, all of them from freeze. Well, eight points down at the break, it's now only six. Okay. Yeah, in, fair, in, in, in fairness to Neil McManus, uh, he's under an incredible amount of pressure because he knows that most of the frees he ha gets, he has to score to keep them in the game. But I'm looking at Antrim here and I'm wondering, like, what are they doing playing in, in Division 2 and, and getting the results that they're getting? Because they're playing some fantastic hurling, get some fantastic scores. Carl Stewart sent this in, Donald O'Cusick. Safe as always, out far as John Gardner. Ball for Isaccio Halpine didn't gather. Johnny Campbell goes in pursuit and Paddy O'Sullivan and back goes Johnny. Out far is uh, Kieran McGurty. Well hooked by Ben O'Connor. Donnelly is there. have to say I'm very impressed with Cormac Donnelly considering he's was playing for the Antrim under 21s only last Wednesday in an Ulster semi-final against Down. He's captain of that team. Ben O'Connor. Coming through the middle, Tom Kenny. He can score from here with ease. His third point of the match. Yeah, Tom will come through the middle all day and collect those balls and tap them o over the bar. He's an incredible engine on him and he'll just cover the width and breadth of, of Crow Park. Up goes Neil McManus, Ray Ryan is there, still McManus chases after him, a kick by Ray Ryan on the slither, gains a few centimetres. Shane Murphy has gone down injured. Owen Cadigan, ball across the line, sideline ball for Antrim. But there's a Cork man down injured. And uh, Shane Murphy requires a little bit of attention. He's in of course because Shane O'Neill Pulled a hamstring in the Munster final replay. This is the incident again. Got it there in the head and the referee is dead right to stop playing to make sure that the right corner back for Cork is able to continue on. Yeah, it was accidental though, Marty, in fairness to Liam Watson. He just continued to um, in pursuit of the ball and he caught him on the side of the head. In fairness to Shane Murphy and, and Ray Ryan, both of them are having two good solid games in, in as replacements. And that's what Cork should be doing now, really, is mm. when, when, when it comes to, we'll say, halfway through this half, they should be introducing players that they want to see how they're going to perform. Because like, they haven't been in Crow Park in a long time, and there's some players on the bench that haven't even played in Crow Park, so it would be important to introduce them for the rest of the championship. Mm. You're looking at Conor O'Sullivan and uh, Michael Walsh from Sarsfields and Kildorry. Two young players emerging onto the Cork scene, but Shane Murphy will be anxious to get back in and prove his point. Well, indeed, Marty, but it's important that, that, that Cork find a few new players before they go in to play Kilkenny in a semi-final. They just have to bring new material in. Carl McKeegan, sideline ball. There's a push on Carl Stewart by John Gardner. And there's going to be a free dead straight in front of the post. Now, I wonder, will he go for goal or will he be happy enough to take the point? He's looking at the sideline. That's Neil McManus. You can just see... Beside the referee, looking for a little bit of guidance. What will I do? It's Liam Watson, actually. And it's Watson, with, considering his performance so far, with five points in play, I might be tempted 